On February 12th, 2022, I spoke with Casey Koizan, interdisciplinary artist from Yellowknife Northwest Territories, who works with various mediums to communicate how culture and technology coincide with political, economic, and environmental challenges in the world. Inspired by sci-fi and the future, he implements techniques such as interactivity, audio video, and the engagement of the bodily senses within his creations. Casey Koizan will be performing in person at the Alex Golden Performing Hall for Winter Wonderment 2022 on Saturday, February 19th at 7 p.m. And on Sunday, February 20th, he'll be providing a workshop at Open Space. Yeah, my name is Casey Koizan. I'm an interdisciplinary artist uh, from Yellowknife Northwest Territories. I'm Dene from that area. Um, I have my multimedia diploma from Lethbridge College, my Bachelor of Fine Arts from uh, Thompson Rivers University in Kamloops, and I am just wrapping up my Master of Fine Arts from University of Manitoba, um, and I'm currently based in Winnipeg. Very cool. Sweet. Hey, it's like, I like, cause you're like in all these different places. First I was like, wait, is he actually in the Yukon right now? Is he in, is he in VC? Where is I he? Grew up, I grew up in the Yukon. Um, I spent about six or seven years in Whitehorse. Oh, wow. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah. Yellowknife, uh, Edmonton, Whitehorse, Lethbridge, Edmonton briefly again, Yellowknife, Kamloops, Vancouver, Yellowknife, and now Winnipeg. So all of Western Canada, I have Western Canada covered, but uh, <laughs> it's been great to travel out um, avidly um, more east and over places like Ontario and Quebec. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun um, with art and music kind of taking me to a lot of different places. So I'm really grateful for, for this, you know, kind of uh, these opportunities and sort of a life like this. It can be stressful sometimes, but it's like we do it to ourselves you know <laughs> self-imposed stress that's super rewarding because there's yeah. so many features that come to play with location music art okay I would love to hear more about how culture and technology for you are intertwined within your art and your art practice such as that really is obvious and also you even describe it yourself and it comes up a lot in your in your descriptions of your work so I'd love to hear direct from you how that oh. how that happens oh. Well, ever since I was a kid, I always had a vested interest in technology and, and sci-fi um, growing up with that. And even though a lot of my childhood and teenage years were spent playing hockey more in a uh, like competitive sports realm, I always had this in interest in it. And um, throughout my life, just learning um, software, more about computers and technology and that sort of thing. And then it, uh, I started focusing more on art when I took my, uh, more of my Bachelor of Fine Arts was more when I started to get into, you know, the contextualization, contextualization of ideas and bring them to fruition in different like mediums and forms. Um, and that's when I started to implement technology into my into my artwork um, mostly like installation art mm -hmm. uh, because there's it's like tactile sort of um, way of understanding an installation um, as opposed to just like a two-dimensional surface or something like that the technology is kind of more um, ingrained within the space um, and moving more into my adulthood I uh, I realized that I, I didn't really know much about my my culture um, I knew a bit from what I grew up with, but I left Yellowknife when I was like seven years old, eight years old. So technology has really helped me to learn more about my culture and understand more about my culture, mostly because with what I mentioned right at the beginning of moving all over Western mm -hmm. Canada, I was always around culture and Indigenous people and, and um, cultures of, of from all over the world, but I was very rarely immersed in my own. So mm -hmm technology played a key part in learning more about that, whether it be from online sources, um, the the Plicho Dictionary is online, that's what I've been referencing for years, uh, the app, uh, the word apps and language apps have been really uh, beneficial to that. Um, and then in like implementing that within my artwork to kind of bring all of these things together in, in interesting ways, sometimes experimental ways. 
Um, so that's how it sort of like plays a role in in how I how I create. Um, and on another side of things with doing a lot of like VR art and 3D modeling and that sort of thing, um, using this technology to tell our stories in different ways and like new new engaging ways to, to learn about, um, you know, the Dene people in general. Um, so that's how it has an effect as well. It's like this back and forth uh, reciprocated sort of relationship um, that I have with it now. Um, so I'm always kind of experimenting with that in various ways, but uh, it's it's fascinating, you know, and I, I feel, and this is, you know, my personal opinion, but I feel that um, technology and, and culture are always kind of growing. And I believe that they have a, a, an opportunity to grow together, you know, and for me, it's helping me learn more about my, my, my culture, but also learning more about technology mm -hmm. each day right, and software and how it all works and that sort of thing. So it's all kind of intertwined in this interesting sort of like relationship. Um, you have completed your bachelor's of fine arts and now you're working on your MFA. Would you like to talk about your thesis that you've been, you know, writing and working on for your master's? It's always yeah. exciting. Um, it's just been submitted. Um, I'll, be, I'll be convocating uh, next week. Um, most likely via Zoom. Um, initially, you know, my parents, what they had in mind was that, you know, gym full of people, a stage, I go up there with my gown and my hat and receive the thing. And, you know, it's like, yay, I did it. It's like, nope. I had to break the news to them. It's like, I don't think it, that's going to happen this year, you know? And they're like, oh, well, so do you still want us to come down? I was like, uh, you don't have to. You know? yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's probably going to be over Zoom now. Um, but I did order like you know the hat yeah. and the thing just right on. Like why not? Like, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take a photo of it. Um, anyways, my thesis. Um, so the project uh, altogether, it's called Echaizo uh, Eto, and uh, that means connected apart from each other. Um, and this, the, my thesis in the work itself, the ins, it's an installation uh, work, um, and it all has to do with how how I've been learning about a lot of my culture from a distance and and using technology um, to kind of get a better understanding of it and um, how to represent myself, that sort of thing. Um, when I first received a drum, a Dene drum, quite a few years ago. Um, I asked the person who was teaching, like who was just showing me, you know, the drum, and, and uh, he actually let me borrow it. At, at it was he let me borrow one of his drums, um, and I asked if he could teach me songs, and he just straight up refused. He's like, "No, make your own," and I was like, "What, really?" He's like, "Yeah, we like we encourage that. We need more songs, so we always encourage uh, beginners to just start making their own songs." And I was like, I can do that. And he's like, yeah, like, you know, we could encourage it. Like elders have told me to do that. And it's just, you know, something we do. And, and I kind of like, that kind of blew my mind. Right. Um, and so it's, it's really encouraged me with everything that I do to, to create and represent my culture in my own way um, in like new and experimental ways, that sort of thing. So this installation houses uh, five um, logs that uh, used to be um, from some big willow trees that were cut down on University of Manitoba's campus. So I was able to salvage a few like big pieces of these trees. Um, facilities really helped me to um, bring them to the sculpture studio and that sort of thing so I could work with them. And then I started hollowing them out um, and they were very, they're still very fresh and very green. It was a really rigorous process. It took forever. Um, a lot of bruises, burns, cuts, scrapes, all that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, so these five logs, one's five feet, two or four feet and two or three feet, they're all hollowed out. They have um, speakers on the inside. Um, with the original showing of it, uh, they had amended uh, five 360 laser scanners that were, that were fastened to the bottom of the logs so that they could pick up your proximity to the logs. So when that happened, um, each log has its own 
um, sort of like mini soundtrack. They have their own um, audio element amended to it. So when you get to each of the logs, they're playing their own sort of soundscape. And they're all uh, synced so that if one person was standing in front of each of the five logs, they would all play together. They all have Dene drum beats inside, um, as well as like, um, you know, a little bit of like experimental and, and affected guitar and synths. Uh, so it feels like this drum dance um, when all of them are activated. Um, so it lets you feel like you're immersed in, you know, a ceremony or drum dance or something like that in a time where those aren't really allowed to happen, right? So, um, and while when people are are in front of the logs and um, getting picked up by lasers, lasers, it's also emitting projections um, onto the surrounding areas of uh, experimental video footage of scenes from the north, things that have inspired me, um, and things that kind of speak more to my my culture and the land of the North Coast Territories. Um, so in in short, that's sort of what my my thesis is all about. Um, and right now, it uh, it was originally shown at Urban Schauben in uh, Winnipeg, and then it went to Regina at the McKenzie Gallery to show in a group show there. Now it's in Toronto, um, and I'm setting it up for a solo exhibit at uh, InterAccess Gallery um, that'll be opening March second. That is so cool. You know, I just hearing that description, it's like, yeah, that's really groovy. I really <laughs> dig it. Um, and it does it does really tie into another question that I have because you know, I you know, we can always access things on the internet and observe these things. I haven't had the opportunity to actually see an installation of yours in person. And I, I hope that I will eventually get to do that because they just are so intense. They're they're an all-encompassing immersive experience and it's gorgeous. And I just love that fusion. Like you just finished describing having sensors in the trees, but there's a tree that's been hollowed out and that's a constant theme within it. And it's really beautiful, but they often have trees involved. There's always yeah. some form of tree. There's always branches. There's, there's a theme that I'm finding. Do you want to talk a bit about that significance perhaps that the trees and branches have within your work that I'm observing or am I wrong? You know? Um, yeah, it's, uh, well, when I, before I got into my Bachelor of Fine Arts, I was pursuing a, a degree in geography because I wanted to, I wanted to work with the land. Um, I wanted to work about on like land governments, uh, land law, all that sort of thing. Um, that didn't quite work out. But when I, when I moved over to the fine, fine arts, I just found that it was a way for me to, to work with the land, like physically, right? Um, to, to bring elements of the landscape inside. Um, and they're mostly dead. It's, I, I'm almost always using dead, um, dead wood branches, that sort of thing. Something that's been separated from the earth. It, that's one thing about my practices. I very rarely, if not ever, um, disconnect materials from the earth myself. Um, they're, they're always things that I've, I've found that have been salvaged. Um, and it's a way for me to give life to, to a, a living thing again, you know, by way of representation of an artwork. Um, <clears throat> and depending on the, the time of decay with, with the, uh, the materials, they, they still have some sort of scent to them. So it's, it's bringing this other sort of engagement of the bodily, bodily senses into the area um just naturally you know um one one a friend of mine when he when he was making his way to to one of my installations as soon as he walked in he took like a big whiff of the air he's like yeah Casey's installation isn't here <laughs> um so it's it's uh yeah a way for me to do that it, it also really like it's really triggering for a lot of people it's very surreal um, one aspect of what I try and evoke when I'm, I'm creating installations like that, it's like a reclamation of space for, for nature, um, as if it's, it's, it's retaking the landscape, um, and it's invading, you know, these architectural sort of like areas and making them their own. Um, so that's another sort of element as to, as to why I work with that, um, 
I'm finding myself not to say this, but I'm just going to say it. The first time that I that I used Earth Materials, I was in um, I was doing my BFA in Kamloops, and I was broke, like straight up broke. I had no money to buy materials or whatever. I had to do a uh, a, a sculpture or something like that. So I walked outside. I was a smoker at the time. I was having a smoke, kind of stressing out, like what am I going to do? And I just walked into the woods. And I started finding stuff and finding branches and that sort of thing. And I brought them all inside. I was like, this is what I'm going to use. And immediately I, I started to en enjoy it, enjoy working with that. And, and you know, they're free materials, but um, I didn't expect that it would kind of like lead me down this, this path, you know, they're still free materials, you know, <laughs> um, but you know, it's the using them, my, my process of using them now has, has matured a lot. Um, one really, um, the thing about using earth materials for me is that if, if I'm using material and I'm not putting any sort of, um, you know, I'm not using any other sort of like uh, coating or, or substance on them, then they're able to go back to the earth, like as I found them basically, right? But if I'm painting them, spray painting them, you know, then that's a toxic element to that. And I don't want to just blatantly disregard nature and, and put that back where I found it. You know, that's, it's a toxic element. So I'm always kind of figuring out how to either continue to show work that have earth materials or something like that, make them really durable, that sort of thing, or how to, you know, return them or, or have them um, be dis discarded in a, a, a healthy way. Um, one of the most meaningful sort of moments that that happened was when I was, I was showing at the Insurgence Resurgence exhibit um, at the Winnipeg Art Gallery in 2017. Um, and it was a work that, that was paying respects and uh, to the people that have been found within the river systems of, of Winnipeg and Manitoba itself. All of the driftwood was found uh, walking up and down uh, those rivers. So a big bundle of, of branches and, and driftwood hung over my back. Um, and then when the exhibition was coming to a close, a bunch of, um, a, a tour was given to a bunch of chiefs and and elders from within Manitoba. And one of the chiefs requested uh, the wood to be burned in ceremony afterwards, like after hearing of yeah. the installation and stuff. And it was such an honor for that to, to happen, for that question to be asked of me. Um, and it was, uh, obviously I said, yes, you know, um, but it was, it was the perfect way for mm -hmm. the materials to be, to be returned to the earth, like even provided what the installation was all about. Um, so yeah, there's many, many, uh, aspects of, of why I really enjoy working with, uh, I just call them earth materials, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. And it, it gets me outdoors. It gets me into the, the woods and finding these things <laughs> and a little bit of exercise of like hauling a gigantic bundle of, of sticks over my back, you know? Sweet. I, I just really appreciate it. Cause as you were saying that, I was like, did you get rid of them by burning them at any point? Or did you return them? I should say, get rid of them is a terrible way of saying it. But I was wondering, it's like, were they burned? Were they burned? I was like, yes, they were. Well, it's like, at, at, even so while perfect. I'm in the installation, like it was told to me numerous times within my BFA, especially because faculty noticed, you know, branches being hung up in the hallway all the time and that sort of thing. And they're always mentioning like, you know, don't start a fire or, you know, <sighs> don't poke anyone's eye out or <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. kind of be safe but yeah the but there's, there's something really powerful about reintroducing like that I know there's cultural reasons and there's cultural value and significance but the I don't know it's like seems like a universal human thing to appreciate this connection that you have this physical form and then it becomes a spirit, you know, and goes back to wherever it came from. And that's so beautiful. So I was getting that vibe and I was like, I wonder, I wonder. Um, a mode of ascension totally just like rocked my world when I was looking at the video on your website of it. I was like, ah, sticks, <laughs> sticks, branches, trees. Okay. Another question regarding your installations and, and, you know, what's going on there. Maybe this is a bit of a left field one, but as you have wonderfully outlined for anyone who hasn't had the opportunity to experience your installations, they, they capture so many different human senses, 
I'd say almost all of them, perhaps with like, without tasting things. I don't know if that's really encouraged to go in and, and taste any of your setup. Um, but I do wonder if they have the ability to perhaps be sensed in another way and in like a spiritual one, or if that's even something that, you know, you think about when you are going into the process of, of creating your, your installations. I think in some way, I always try to, to engage, um, you know, spirit within, within my installations, um, hopefully that, that it's, it's able to, to be received by anyone or anything. Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely present there while I'm making these things, you know, there's spirit of, of, you know, these giant logs and, and that sort of thing. They, it, it used to have a life. It still has a life, you know, it's, it's being respectful to that process as well. Um, whenever I do acquire earth materials, I'm always giving an offering to the land, um, whether it just be tobacco or something else as a, as a thank you and, an, and a form of appreciation. Um, <clears throat> within the work that that I'm going to be showing in Victoria for wonderment, um, it's all about engaging with with the spirits. You know, it's all all about engaging with our ancestors um, because it's about enhancing and amplifying the the vibration and resonance of our drum playing and and our singing and chanting, right? Um, so absolutely, like I really, I can't say that it does, but I really do hope that my work can be sensed by other forms as well. Cool, thank you, that's wonderful. Okay, yes, we've been talking a lot about your installation art and your sculptural art. Um, that's probably something that I just get obsessed with when I see people do that. Um, but we need to talk about your sound art, your music. You're alluding to it already because you're going to be here very soon. I don't know how you're going to juggle convocation and also performing, but it's going to be an awesome week. Um, <laughs> I leave next day, the next day. I, no <laughs> I convocate on the 16th and my flight's on the 17th to Victoria. So. Oh my gosh, what an awesome week. That's actually going to be really, really celebratory, fun, and like so many things happening. But okay, let's, let's talk a bit about your sound art and your music and your music videos because like you do a lot of that. Um, what are some of the separate processes or separate creative processes and products that, um, that connect when, when doing that? Or is there a connection between those things? Are those totally separate things? I mean, with, with doing a lot of different things and, and creating a lot of different um, art with different mediums and different you know, genres or whatever, there's always some sort of like overlap, right? Mm -hmm. Um, within a lot of my my artwork or installations and creating soundscapes and creating like audio triggers for things and that comes from this producer musician kind of um, you know lens or, or past right um, and then when I'm creating music um, it's it's inspired by or from my art because I can't you know I don't have split personalities I can't like divide these people or whatever um so there's always some sort of like uh fluidity between those two worlds the audio and the art I like to think that they they're the same thing uh but at the same time like throughout my my life and my career I've tried to divide them as mm -hmm. well um, whereas now it's getting to a point where I'm bringing them back together again. Um, like I don't have a, a, a name a stage name for when I'm playing music anymore. Like, um, it's all kind of bringing everything sort of together. Um, so yeah, I create like a lot of soundtrack work for my own stuff. Usually anything that I produce, I'm creating some sort of element, uh, audio element for that, uh, which is made, you know, from scratch. Um, so I like to do soundtracks and scores for films because I feel like I'm, I'm good at being able to pair um, the, the audio element to a video uh, sort of process. So I've done that quite a bit in the past. Um, I'll just create just music sometimes, you know, um, I'm in the process right now of, of doing some collab tracks with a few other uh, musicians. Um, I have a collab with a rapper from Edmonton uh, coming up soon. Um, her name is uh, Sedica, um, for anyone who's a fan of, of her work. Um, she just sent me the her, her lyrics of, of what she did, and I'm stoked. So, you know, I just got to acquire those solo tracks, put some effects on it, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
so there's that like music music sort of element where it's pretty much like just music uh but when i was creating my own stuff um as uh, naga which means bushman in Plicho, um, which is like the spirit of the woods, of the Northwest Territories. It's like this interesting sort of spirit. It's like neither good nor bad, but it's basically there to remind you to respect the land. Um, <clears throat> so when I was creating music for that, I started to make a lot of my own music videos um, because when I play these songs live, I wanted there to be like projections and visuals to be paired with things, right? So at one point I made like a 45 minute video that corresponded to each of my songs throughout, throughout a set, you know, so it was a lot of work, uh, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And I know that people who were, who were watching the set uh, really enjoyed that as well. So <clears throat> now with with this um, project that I'm, I'm showing in Victoria is kind of like bringing the, the art and music uh, as together as this unified like audio visual, like art performance, you know, uh, there'll be elements of music in it and how I'm constructing the music be very music based, but there's also, you know, a lot of uh, artistic elements within the project itself, whether it be the construction of, you know, the, um, I call it an audio choker. It's basically like a choker with contact mics, amended uh, three contact mics um, and outputs. Uh, they're being channeled through caribou antler and then outputs that'll be going to an interface and then uh, interacted with, um, with Max MSP and Ableton um, to trigger, you know, the, the video elements as well as to treat the audio, incoming audio signals with effects and that sort of thing. I'm a, I'm a huge like fan of delay and reverb and distortions and all that sort of stuff. So there'll also be a trigger on my drum, um, which will kind of bring everything together. And it's kind of like a, a experimental representation of my Dene culture um, and how we choose to um, sort of like express ourselves, um, that sort of thing. The piece is called The Balance. Um, and what the balance is, um, it's actually, here, let me just, so on the Dene drum, um, there are two pieces of like hide, very thin pieces of hide or sinew, um, which are stretched across the face of it. So you can see it there, like oh, yeah. they're mended. And these are there to like increase the, the vibration and the resonance of of the drum so it's it's got like it's basically like a um a snare rattler you know so it has, it's definitely not the nicest sound but like that's what it's there for it's there to increase the sort of like vibration um and i asked a friend of mine what what those two things those two pieces of hide uh, represented and he said they represent the balance like they represent the balance of all things um you know uh, land and sky um love and war everything you know like harmony and chaos um so and they're they're there to increase the resonance of our drums so that um they're better received by our ancestors and by the spirits because we're made up mostly of water um, and increased vibration and resonance really um, makes that a lot more impactful, right? So what I wanted to do, it's like, okay, well, how do I take that further? Um, so it's like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna attach a contact mic to my drum <clears throat> and three contact mics to my throat so that this project becomes more about, like strictly about vibration and resonance uh, as opposed to like air and voice right so it'll mostly have a way more like drone based kind of feel um that sort of thing i'll actually show you the the audio choker right now yeah That's let's see that this is cool complete but um okay so Oh, wow. This is cool. Oh, my God. 
I'll be quiet. This is I still great. need to uh, implement the beadwork and stuff, but I just have them there as kind of like a, where I'm going to put them. So those are the pieces of caribou antler and uh, that's sort of kind of like embedded right in there um, on the back. So I'll lift this up a little bit so you can see. It's like So those are the contact mics there. There's three of them. So the middle one will be um, on my, my throat and then the two or the middle one is going to be on my Adam's apple basically and that'll be like the base um, and the two on the sides are going to be um, mids and treble and I'll be able to kind of like go back and forth with those um, and kind of select and choose and loop um, and that sort of thing so yeah still a bit of work to do with those but it's all coming together nicely um, the audio choker is like you know, arguably the most important thing about about the work now, but um, it's very like programming savvy as well. So um, that's coming along nicely, but I still have a bit of work to do for that. But I'm excited. Like this was a work that um, when the pandemic hit in March of 2020, we lost studio access for like three or four months. Oh, so wow. we didn't we didn't know. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get back in there to work on the logs and stuff. So I had to switch my thesis to this project. Um, so I started developing, basically I have a thesis for this project as well. <laughs> um, but when we got studio access back, I was like, okay, I need to shelf this and focus on this other work right now. Cause it's, you know, quite demanding and stuff. Um, but it's always been there, you know? So now like it was, it was a chance for me to get back to it. Um, and really like suss out everything that I wanted to include with it um, and to do it in, in a way and that uh, was right for me. And maybe the timing was just meant to be. So kind of kind of seems like it. Totally. And even the idea that, you know, it's not often that you're in the middle of like a term and you suddenly, or not, I shouldn't say a term, but like in the middle of, of a master's and you have to produce two theses. <laughs> That sounds terrible to say it like that, theses, but it, you don't often do that. So now you have two of these incredibly well thought out, really deep pieces that, you know, can be experienced. And lucky for us in Victoria, we get to experience that on the 19th. So I'm pretty stoked for that. And, you know, COVID restrictions probably won't be so terrible on the six, like post 16th. So lots of people will be able to, within reason, of course, be able to experience what you're going to be doing. I can't thank you enough for sharing the visual features of what you're, you know, what you were talking about as well with the drum and the neck choker. Like, oh my gosh, the, wait, I said throat choker. I'm so, I got to get this right. I'm, I'm just dazzled by seeing colors. I just, I just say audio choker. Audio but, choker. Thanks. Um, yeah. I'm going to try and find another, another term for it i think throat choker is bad audio choker makes a lot more exactly sense. you know <laughs> <laughs> I, thank you so much casey this has been wonderful talking with you i'm very excited for the for the 19th um I, I would love to you know invite you if you have any other final thoughts you'd like to share yeah i i'm looking forward to the 19th myself this has been amazing just chatting with you so i don't mind. yeah um yeah, just I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. This is going to be my my second time ever to Victoria. Um, first time, you know, performing there. Um, I'm really I'm really looking forward to it. Um, Eli Hurdle is is the one who kind of curated me into into all of this and wonderment and with open space um, having their kind of correlation with the project as well. I'll be uh, teaching a workshop or doing a talk with them uh, the following day. My social media, I'm, I'm on Facebook as Casey Koizan or Casey Koizan Art or Casey Koizan Sound. Um, Instagram, uh, it's at Casey Koizan Art and at Casey Koizan Sound. Um, those are pretty much the two main ones that I use. You know, there's the LinkedIn and all of that other yeah. stuff. Yeah, exactly. And there's a website. Yeah. Okay. This all is right. CaseyKoizan.com. <laughs> Right. Oh, <laughs> of course that's the one that you know is forgotten ah forget about yeah. the website it's yeah. just me on social media find me there but thank you so much this has been an incredible right chat thank you. Yeah. yeah i'm thank looking you. forward to the 19th and congratulations with the convocation and having such a full week <laughs> next <Yeah>. week <laughs> <laughs> thank you looking okay. forward to it all Thank you, Casey, for chatting with me. It was wonderful to hear about your respectful use of earth objects, interdisciplinary art practice, and completion of your master's thesis. Congratulations on your convocation. 
Looking forward to Saturday's performance. Casey will be performing in person at the Alex Golden Performing Hall for Winter Wonderment 2022 on Saturday, February 19th at 7pm, and on Sunday, February 20th, he will be providing a workshop at Open Space. 